Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst for Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. You know, as we look at software-defined storage, it's made a significant impact in the data center today to help increase flexibility and decrease cost. But to really reach its full potential, we need more. We need to shift from sort of a 1.0 uh, version of the technology to a 2.0 version of the technology. To join me in the conversation to discuss this, I've asked Andrew Flint from IOFabric to join us. Andrew, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So before we jump into what is 2.0 software-defined storage, tell us a little bit about IOFabric. IOFabric's a two-year-old startup from a group of serial entrepreneurs, and this is the fifth startup for our CEO and my fourth working with him. 2.0 implies that we've got to improve some things with 1.0. So what are some requirements that you would place on a software application to make it 2.0? Well, I think there's a few, but today I'm just going to focus on two of them. Okay. Thing one, quality of service. Okay, so that's a term we see a lot in the kind of the networking world and things like that. We're slowly starting to see it come into the storage world. How would you apply it here? Well, actually, networking is a good way to start. So let's look at how networking implemented QoS because they've been living this from the beginning. Say you're working from home, you're at the home office, and suddenly one of your neighbors decides to play a bunch of high bandwidth video games and download every episode of Game of Thrones ever made. Suddenly, your connection to the office goes to zero, your work getting done is... I think I've had that happen to me. Yeah, uh, we all have. So the ISPs realized this relatively early and they implemented a bandwidth cap. We have the same in storage. So right now, storage quality of service is effectively an IOPS limiter. Okay. So pretend this was storage and instead of downloading Game of Thrones, your BI tool suddenly woke up, decided to run its week's report, it's taking everything that storage can give. Right, and so all the applications are dying. Possibly even the ones that the revenue base of your company is running on. Okay. You can't have that. In the BI tool, it's running a weekly report. Maybe it's not needed for several days. So you have an IOPS limiter. This goes away. This takes longer to go, but everything else works. That's basically where it is in storage, but networking kept going. They said, well, we're going to have different levels of bandwidth for different price. So sort of a gold, silver, bronze effect. Exactly. And they went slightly further and they started to shape traffic so they understood what you were doing, what application was using bandwidth, and they could hold downloads slower while your streaming Netflix still worked because that makes you a happy customer. Right. This is what we need to see in storage. Rather than just an IOPS limiter, you need to be able to define all of the elements that drive storage on a per application basis or a group of applications. Okay. So one of which is the response time expectancy, expected. So your latency, uh -huh. your overall performance or IOPS, yep. and the sustained throughput. So in a 2.0 software-defined storage app environment, I'd be able to go in and fine tune that per application. Exactly, exactly. And it should be dynamic. It should be aware of everything that's going on in storage infrastructure and adapt as requirements and loads change. Okay, awesome. So what would be the other requirement then? The other is reuse of existing storage infrastructure. So implementing QoS on this level is easy. If you throw out all your storage and you replace everything with flash arrays. Right. SSDs across the enterprise, you can now deliver this. There's lots of performance there. That's an expensive and wasteful solution. So let's right. say you don't want to do that. Okay. You want to reuse the existing infrastructure, so say you've got your SAN, and on the array we've got a LUN here that we've carved out for the database. Now the database is running out of space, so we need to make that LUN bigger, but there's no space on the array. That's okay, we've got more arrays. We move some data over, 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 free up space. And now we made that LUN larger, database is happy again, and why does this take so long? This is something that should be automatic. And, you well, have, and this is a lot of manual interaction here too, right, to make all that move happen. The migration is really expensive operation, yeah. and th this takes a long time. So prone, prone for human error too. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Now SDS 1.0, some of them have storage virtualization, which will wrap around yeah. that, create dynamic LUNs, 
that are thinly provisioned and will grow as necessary. Mm -hmm. And that's good. Also, not enough. Okay. Let's go back to our QoS. You shouldn't have to worry about all the knobs and all the issues of setting IOPS, setting all the minutia of what that lunge should do. You should be able to set just the performance that the database requires and have the system create that LUN for you. Okay, that makes sense. So on your SAN, you have some SSDs, you have some HDDs, you may even have a PCIe flashcard on the database itself. Okay. We've decided the database gets platinum service, the BI tool gets bronze service, so it's not going to be starved out by anything that happens here. Okay. But for platinum service, the overall system should be able to look at all the storage media that's available, create a LUN that includes much of the PCIe local, okay. DAS, some SSDs and HDDs from the SAN, possibly even you know, elastic overflow to the cloud. Okay. And possibly even on this side, use direct attached DRAM if it's available for extra low latency. Well, and very high performance there, right? Well, and I think that I, as a admi storage administrator, don't have to get into the business of creating that because that looks like a lot of work. You, this software would do it automatically for me. Correct. It's the idea of um, buying a car. You don't want to buy a car and build the engine yourself. You have a destination in mind. So you want the car that's going to get you there. Right. This is setting the destination. I need certain response time, I need certain performance, I need certain sustained bandwidth, and this should be able to adapt it. Use the existing infrastructure, better utilize capacity, because again, when you're talking performance, we're not just talking about giving more performance to all your applications, but it's sustained, reliable performance. Not all your data is active at any given time. In fact, 80% of it is stale. Right. Only 5% of it is something that needs platinum service. So even in the database, if you were to load that full of flash, you'd have overutilized flash with stale data. In this environment, you would have data moved down as it's becoming less active, up as it's becoming active, also moved to direct attached if available for locality, and this keeps your QoS levels. Okay. Well, Andrew, thanks very much. I think this is, it really helps from a, a storage administrator standpoint, an application standpoint, the ability to automatically move all this and make all this happen without the complexity that we see today in the environment. As you've seen today, software-defined storage needs to take that next leap and move to a 2.0 generation that automates more of the data center, allowing it to be more flexible and more responsive to the needs of the application. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.